within each and every role player lives this homeless character who wants nothing more than to quiet the heartbeat of every living thing that stands in his way. Today, we celebrate this all too familiar character with... Well now, looky here, it's the Murder Hobo Show. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the Murder Hobo RPG Show, episode 17, back to the 90s with Vampire the Masquerade, a game that I have never read nor played, recorded May 27, 2020. I am one of your hosts, Gary, a.k.a. the Murder Hobo, or people can call me Major IPS if you... Uh, did I say IPS? Is that like premenstrual? I meant IBS <clears throat> as in bowel. Major- yeah, that area. <laughs> right? And I am here with none other than this guy, Uncle J. Raz, a.k.a. Captain Colin. What's going on, my man? How you doing? Well, I was just, you know, trying to set everything up. I'm excited. We get to hang out. We get to stream. We get to do our little show here. We get to talk some schmack, talk some, say some bad things about some stuff. Yep. Do what we do. Our voodoo that we do. Mm-hmm. What's, um, yeah, well, I mean, because this is a podcast about role-playing games, and uh, as usual, we're going to ramble incoherently in an attempt to sound like we know what we're talking about and hope you don't call us on our bullshit, especially his bullshit. <clears throat> Yeah, mine, which is pro, you know, prodigious at best. <laughs> I'd say it's not as it's not as I don't know if it's as a, um, I don't know if it's as massive as Gary's, but I it, but there's a lot of it. I think there's the sheer volume. I think I'm the winner, but I think Gary just for for like a big a big load, he's your king. A big load of what? <laughs> All right, bullshit. Oh. <laughs> uh, I am pretty good at the BS. I am pretty good at the arts of uh, talking smack and doing things like that. Uh, what are we? So speaking of you know BS and then talking about stuff, what are we doing today? You, you got a show programmed for us here. Oh yeah, man. Um, today we're gonna we're gonna start in our little series that uh, that we kind of talked about. It's our uh, back to the '90s series. In fact, uh, we're gonna cover some games that totally eluded me in the '90s for whatever reasons. I, I stopped playing uh, RPGs. Put that on the shelf in 1994, and I didn't, I didn't return to the hobby until like 2009. So I want to go back and cover some of the stuff that I sort of missed, and maybe, maybe it's stuff that you didn't play as well. I don't know. Um, you're you're like our big D and D guy, so maybe this is stuff that uh, that eluded you as well. So I just want to go back and cover the 90s. And and uh, what's remarkable is nine, you know, 1990s. In 1990 was 30 years ago. Can you believe that? Yeah, silence. <laughs> podcast and fail mm-hmm. uh, yeah I can believe it dude I'm going to be 49 this year that puts me at 50 next year which means I was born in 1971 yep I am uh, going to be 47 next month so yeah uh, you start reflecting like I I was I became a senior in high school 30 years ago and so the last thing that I remember reading um, before I joined the army was riffs and boy that gave me a, a headache and you know I think I lost a few brain cells, and that's before I decided to do, do that, you know, on my own. You know, I didn't need an RPG to do that for me. So I wanted to go back and revisit some of this stuff. And, and apparently one of the big uh, – or one of the – in fact, one of the big movements in RPGs came from the White Wolf uh, the White Wolf games, which you know, Vampire the Masquerade was being like their flagship one. And so I wanted to cover that, but I didn't want to come, cover – the 90s version of it, I actually wanted to cover the modern version of it. Because to me, like going back in time and reading like the old stuff, it just sort of, I don't know, it's it just it's too much of a, I don't I, it's, it's like going back and watching v, VHS. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when, when I don't have to. <laughs> Man, do you ever remember watching uh, uh, porn on VHS? Oh, God, it was the worst, too. And I was telling my nephew about that. I was saying, you have it so easy. Like, you can dial up whatever you want to. I said, when when, you, when we had to watch that stuff when we were kids, when I was your age, we had to know a guy who knew a guy who had a tape. And it wasn't anything that you so like You just got what you got. You know, yeah. it was a tape. And you had to watch it with the shades drawn, with nobody in the house. And you had to watch it with three other dudes. Mm-hmm. If, you're, so, if you're lucky, you had a remote control. Uh, right. I, I worked for a, for a little place called uh, Rent Town, Rent to Own, as a repo man when I was 17, 18. And uh, <laughs> I bought me an eight head VCR. So you could pretty much nice. pause that thing anywhere and it would be picture perfect. But I got to tell you, man, I burned the uh, rewind feature out on that uh, that deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the first thing to go to in those old uh, VHS. Oh, man. Um, old VCRs, high tech, man. Jay. High tech, buddy. Well, you know, Betamax was actually the industry standard too. You know, and that's one thing Betamax should have caught on. It was a better format, but, but but it was easier to produce 
porn on and cheaper to produce porn on VHS. And so that's why the whole round, but anyway, that's a whole other discussion. That's our, you know, that's our, uh, our, our other podcast, you know, uh, the murder herbo, uh, uh, porn show. Do we still do that? Or that's our, that's our holiday special. That's right. Well, I mean, we do it, but it's just me and you and, you know, on that's Skype right. and we don't, and we don't it record to the it. <laughs> it's not recorded. We mm-hmm. just like to grease up and, uh, you know, take our shirts off, get the Vaseline out, that kind of thing. Right. And anyway, watch I, old, uh, old seventies porn. That's um, what we do. Well, they have that cool new feature these days uh, uh, for Netflix called, um, it's not called Netflix and chill. We all know what that is, but, uh, mm-hmm. It's the it's the deal where you can sit together with your friends friends on a streaming device like you know Netflix has their little platform mm. or whatever, and you and your buddies can watch a movie together. Yeah, right. We that's cool. You, what we need is that for watching porn together, <laughs> or not. I don't. So we don't have to go back to those days, man. <laughs> like that's the one thing about technology is we've grown past that because I just like the fact that like my fifteen. This was at the time when he was fifteen when I told him that. Um, you know, he that he could just dial up whatever he wanted to watch, and I'm like, "You sick little bastard!" Like, hope you get in trouble. And I think he did too. I think I ratted him out because that's what kind of uncle I am. But anyway, <laughs> you know what's funny too is by the time you you got into porn in like the the you know the 80s and 90s, it was still full bush. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Man, by the time I met a oh. real girl, and it was it was shave time. You know, it, it was like, what? What is going on down here? This is this is unnatural. What? What? <laughs> what? I only heard about this. I only heard a guy talk about this yet. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't widespread in that, yeah. you know, in that sense. Like, it's like it was like it was like an urban legend, right? It's like, what is this thing I have to deal with? I, I thought it was just a black triangle, <laughs> <laughs> right? No, now I got it. What, what? What's going on here? Man. What now? I got to look up some other stuff. Now I got to do research. You know, back Seriously, to the internet. This is this is supposed to be a, a podcast about role playing games, and we've done nothing we but don't, no. incoherently ramble about old porn movies. <laughs> I just you know, uh, well, it's sort of so like dumb. the way I see it too. This podcast is sort of like we're giving each other agency. If one one person goes off a track, then we just follow it down the other way. Right? We're like trying to be good GMs. You ever watch those videos on YouTube, like where you see like disasters and stuff like that? There's this one uh, that's like a crane. They use cranes to build skyscrapers and stuff. And you know, mm-hmm. there's a dude up in this thing, and it's windy or mm-hmm. it's whatever. But the crane breaks, and the guy just like teeters over the edge. I feel oh, wow. I feel like you're the crane operator, and I'm in the bucket of the crane. <laughs> <You laughs> yeah, that's, and we're just waiting for it to go off. Like, is it gonna go? Is it gonna go? Uh, <clears throat> uh, went off. It snapped. Um, and we went this way, <laughs> down. <laughs> right. Um. Uh, so, uh, so what have you been playing? You know, these last couple of weeks, my dude. Uh, have you been doing anything? We were supposed to do. Yeah, actually, I, I've been doing a lot of stuff. I got, I got a couple of things on the go. Um, I got my biweekly ICRPG game that comes up this Sunday. So four days. I got to prep for that. Tomorrow, I'm doing. Uh, sort of like a Wuxia, Savage Worlds Wuxia game with my friends from Nerd Haven. So that's going to be sweet. Uh, I got to do some karate chopping, some, you know, kick flips, some chops to the nards, that kind of stuff, which is going to be fantastic. And uh, what else? Well, we were supposed to do wrestling on, on Sunday, but uh, you are back on call now. So you had a late yeah, night I, that got put on hold. Yep, that got put on hold, but I got off call today, which is awesome because I love it. As soon as I go off call, I sleep better. I just feel like generally better. I'm just ready to like... You know, I'm ready to party as soon as I get off call. Yeah. But um, so yeah, we'll let that we'll we'll see if that happens here uh, in a couple weeks. But yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and push people that hey man, sign up. Let's let's get this going. Got to get some wrestling going. Um, speaking of which, I'm actually got another campaign of that going. In fact, where ours is taking place in Texas, this one's taking place in Florida, and I got a few people from uh, Nerds International hanging out and um, playing with uh, you know playing with me. And I'm I started thinking if I get another campaign, I would like to set up like a Montreal campaign. And like a uh, like a Japan, you know, one in Japan, and so like I got my whole little you know territory, like I'm Vince McMahon or something. That'd be awesome. Yeah, sweet. Um, th- that is the second time I've accidentally rolled the dice while you were talking. I feel very <laughs> unprofessional today in my podcasting skills and abilities. Um, I got some dice, Jay. I, I did a Kickstarter, and uh, oh nice. I'll hold this one up to this camera so the peeps can see it. But that's supposed to be like a, a grenade. So uh, there was a Kickstarter that went off a little while ago that that uh, came through for me finally, and it's just varied uh, wild dice. Like this one here has got like a little st- oops, I gotta go left to right picture of some planets on it and stuff like that. 
Uh, some have guns, some have swords, you know, pirate themes. So they're just different themed wild dice that just came in the other day. And they're sitting here on my desk and I just have the the uh, the urgency to want to roll them because <laughs> they're right there. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, so yeah, and then I got my uh, I got my digital dungeon master Dave the digital dungeon master game. We're playing that on Sundays. We're doing the Beck me stuff, the Beck me Beck me basic expert, all that kind of stuff, which is pretty interesting. Gotcha. Uh, I took a swan dive into um, an illusionary pool uh, face first. I should have broken a couple of chiclets or at least my nose, but uh, um, I managed to successfully live through that because he was being generous with me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my, my little secret note was uh, that the, the two guys that whose castle we've invaded are, have hidden the money in a pool. And so I saw this pool, and in the bottom of it was a bunch of money, and I'm like, hell yeah, we rich, and I dived in. <laughs> but it was an illusion, and I took a 10-foot header into the bottom. Probably broke my neck, but we retconned that a little bit, and uh, <laughs> I ended up not dying. So, yeah, that's what I got on the go. I got some sweet wusha. I got some WWW, or is it WWE? It's just or no, no, yeah, WWW. We're not going to give credit to like the WWE or Vince McMahon or anything like that. Um, we got to play. Uh, we got to play a little Savage Worlds uh, last uh, or this past weekend, which was sweet. You did with the uh, huh? Yeah, you, with John Steve. Oh yeah, yeah. XCOM, XCOM. That was another thing that we did that was freaking fantastic. That guy puts on a badass game. I gotta say, man. He's, his presentation was a uh, and he was you know he was a little hard on himself because you know there was a little bit of technical difficulty but I don't I see past all that stuff uh, you know that kind of comes with the territory online there's going to be some bumble it's sort of like when your cat jumps on the table in the middle of a game in a live person game right. I don't know if you had that trouble I don't think your dog you know jumps on the table but it's a thing with cat people which yeah I happen to be one you know when when you're a podcaster <sighs> and you're head bunting the mic and. The mm-hmm. rolling dice of the table like the consummate professionals that we are. Yeah, that mm-hmm. game was a lot of fun. Uh, you played Red Elvis, which was uh, like an Asian uh, Elvis impersonator. And, uh, yeah, he's I, a yep, Chinese on. guy who, uh, you know, who uh, had an affectation for Elvis stuff. And so he, he would uh, uh, do a little Elvis stuff, baby. And any chance I get to, you know, imitate Elvis or something, I'd you know, try to take it, you know, take advantage of that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I did, um, the old man, which is, which was actually really funny when I read the notes for the old man, turns out that he was Matt Stark's old character from the previous games that we used to run that I ended up pushing. Uh, we, we, we did this one where, where the mothership was over top of New York. So we had to get on, on the mothership and take it down. After we blew the engine out of the mothership, we had to dive out of like a window that we gunned open and we called for help. So as the ship is careening down, you know, very slowly as the gravitational stuff sort of breaks way and it starts to hit down, we dive out of this mm-hmm. thing and try and land on like the little tongue flap in the back of the ship and stuff that reared up there. Mm-hmm. So Matt jumps out, pulls his parachute, he tries to parachute into this thing and I pulled out the uh, uh, the malfunction card. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, can I play I this on? That. Can I play you this? about that, man. That was... Yeah, I'm like, can I play this on Matt? And and John's like, it's the end of the game, sure. So Matt went greeny to his death. Well, as it turns out, the old man is was Matt's old character. He got some. Uh, he got scraped up off the sidewalk and uh, injected with some alien DNA, and now he's got some kind of regenerative uh, superpowers and shit like that. So that was pretty sweet. I played that guy, gunned some stuff down, and uh, blew some things up. It was fantastic. No, that's awesome, man. Yeah, we had a good time, and I got to. My big thing was I got to, uh, you know, jump up and karate kick a uh, uh, sectoid in the neck. That was awesome. And I got to, you know, rolling, rolling nineteen to hit is always fun in Savage Worlds because <laughs> you know you get that extra d six worth of damage. And I don't think the damage was spectacular, but it was enough to not. It was enough to kill him. But man, just rolling a nineteen is, you know, that's that's fun stuff, dude. Yeah, it's good times. So we got a couple of things here in the show notes that we're going to run by. You're going to pick these up. Gen Con, something's going up there. We got some COVIDs at the Gen Cons. Yeah, uh, well, Gen Con is, you know, has been officially canceled. And so I just wanted to talk about this is pretty much the the, the year of uh, the year of no cons, I think. I think pretty much that uh, anything that's going to happen, anything that we've planned to do is pretty much going to, the kibosh is going to be put on. But, you know, it better be safe. Sorry, that's what I'm, that's how, that's where I'm standing on all this. Well, you, you know. Come over to my house. I'll throw in some porns, and we can have Gary Con at my place. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Why don't we do that? We just order like you guys have decent pizza in Canada, right? Man, are you, you, know? are you kidding? Uh, we we got we we got pizza so decent that we have ham named after our country. That's true. I forget. I forget. That's you know. Actually, I'm one of the few people that 
like a Hawaiian pizza is one of my favorite pizzas. And so it's got the Canadian bacon on it. And that's one of my favorite toppings on a pizza. Mm -hmm. So yes, man. So maybe you guys, man, I, I don't know this living close to the Canadian border in the future seems pretty, pretty all right to me. I got two couches downstairs, a his and a hers. Well, it's really <laughs> just like two couches, but mm -hmm. we, you can sit on one side. I'll sit on the other. I got a 60 inch TV, full surround sound. We prop a couple of pizzas on our bellies and uh, yeah. <laughs> We'll binge Netflix. We'll watch the expansion season five. Yep. When it comes out. Yep. Stranger Things season four. Damn, I'm I'm down for taking a week off work just to lay into that chance that show. Uh, I, y'all, me too, man. Yeah, in fact, that's what I probably end up doing. <laughs> that's probably that's exactly what we would end up doing too. Soon because it would be like uh, I think it would come out again this yeah this uh, uh, December. So yeah, so yeah, and and we'll be we'll be neighbors pretty much. Mm -hmm. well, you know. It's you'll be, be on the other. You'll be on the good side. I'll still well, be here. Hey, with any luck, my country will keep your country out so that we don't get reinfected. Yep. And uh, you know, you can just swing by the border, and I'll throw rocks at you. I'll show you where we can. That'll hurt. It. We can hook up, and I'll <laughs> and I'll uh, and I'll keep all your rifts and deadlands stuff. How about that? Oh man, still stuck in the other side of the border. Ay ay ay. Speaking of deadlands, we got something to show about to notes say, here. There's your yeah. Segue. This is uh they they finalized everything, and and why why I wanted to post this really quick because. I'm I'm pretty sure that here in about a week or two we're going to get the, the the PDF releases, and I'm thinking once that happens, um, this is where I'm going to focus a lot of my attention. Of course, because the WW uh, where the worldwide wrestling stuff sort of runs itself because it's player facing. I just have to let you guys go at it, and I just throw in some curveballs. But for actually a GM focused game, um, Deadlands is where I'm. I, I got my mind, man. And you know, I'm just wondering if that's that's going to be your thing, or if that um, if, if that's going to be your thing too once the PDFs release. I, don't, I won't be playing it. I'm going to finish off. I, I got another year's worth of my ICRPG game campaign. Sweet. That I'm going to run um, these six episodes or six more adventures anyway. But these, some of these adventures mm -hmm. seem to be taking two, three sessions, which is a month, month and a half by the time I wrap it all up. Right. Um, but that's going really well, and uh, I'm in no rush to cancel that campaign. I'm having a lot of fun running that, and so. No, that's it's a big hit, uh, right? I'm, I'm thinking when I'm done with that one, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm, I'm going to do either de – no, I'm doing wise, guys. I, I keep putting it off, but I want to do it so bad. So after that, it'll probably be a couple of, you know, maybe a short mini campaign of wise guys where I, I kill some peeps. And mm -hmm. um, after that, I'm not 100% sure. Probably 50 fathoms. Um once I get a stat, once we get situated, because, you know, like I said, we'll be neighbors and we'll be moving here sometime in the next, you know, in between the next six months or so, um, in, you know, in that time frame and between that. And, you know, once if they clear, if they clear everything and everything's good to go, um, we I got all the rift stuff. I, you know, Deadlands. I mean, there's a multitude of stuff that we can sit there and do. And also there's, you know, non Savage World stuff, too, that we can talk about running but yeah, uh, the possibilities, man, with all the stuff that we got coming out, man, it's crazy. Nice. And I don't think this is going to be the last Kickstarter that we're going to see from uh, um, Pinnacle this year. I think probably towards the end of the year, probably around maybe the fall, they're going to kickstart some companions. Yeah, sweet. Section two, let's hit it. All right, vampire, are you going to throw in your music bed? My bad, dude. <laughs> All right, we're gonna fade that bad boy out, and uh, we're gonna awesome. talk. We're gonna talk a, a little little vampire, the masquerade. There, my my sweet Jesus, my sweet man. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, I figure if we're gonna if we're gonna talk RPGs and, and you know take this deep delve into uh, the nineties, and yeah, I hit the fucking pop can. <laughs> God damn it! Try to be professional. Hit that shit anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, the the White Wolf games were sort of just so, sort of eluded me, and I've heard so many people talk to, and a lot of people that I I hang out with in, in different communities, they talk about this great love for these for these games that they played, and um, it's not just Vampire the Masquerade, but uh, a lot of White Wolf, the White Wolf games in general. That's Vampire, uh, you know, Vampire, and then there's Werewolf the Apocalypse, Mage the Ascension, um, several. Other, let's think here. There's a uh, uh, there's Mummy and there's uh, I forget the other one, but yeah, there's just a, a, a big universe called the World of Darkness um, where these games reside in, and uh, and and I just heard a lot of people have a lot of fondness for these uh, for these games, and and they just sort of, and they eluded me for whatever reason, but what I do know, just from talking to a lot of people, is 
White, well, the White Wolf, the, the, the people who published these, and The World of Darkness is really what brought the ladies to the table in the uh, in the 90s. <clears throat> really? Because, yeah, if you think about it, though, man, D&D, you know, being the big one, it's kind of hard. Well, like back then, it was sort of just kind of like hard to, you know, it, you know, I, I can't really say that I can get into the mind of a female or whatever, but I would just almost assume, like, all right, what am I, I'm going to be an elf. That's going to be the closest thing that I want to be, or I can be a beautiful, powerful you know, undead, you know, you know, undead, you know, something or other, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like a, a vampire or something like that, where I can be beautiful forever. I can be powerful. Um, I can dominate. I can do all these things, you know, these things that I'm probably not in real life. That's a lot more appealing to me than being a dwarf and, you know, looking for treasure and, you, you know, in a dungeon. So that's what I'm saying. You know, it, it's, it's a little more appealing. And it's also, you know, to some other people, it's also appealing to in that sense. So I'm like, all right, I get that. Because I always gravitated toward the superhero RPGs, and you gravitated towards, you know, AD and D, you know, for whatever reason. You like you like the lore and and whatnot, and I just maybe it's because I the power fantasy. Maybe it's just because I felt inferior my whole life. Maybe that's why I just wanted to be a superhero. I don't know, man. We're getting into psychology things. You know? <laughs> Is that where that's what we're doing right now? I feel like it. I guess I guess so. You know, or, or whatever. I don't know your reasons for getting D and D. Maybe you just think it's cool, and I just like same thing, superheroes. And at the end of the day, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of women or whatever, just this, this, this they kind of um, this sort of appeal to them. I'm like, if it brand, if it brought them to the, you know, if it brought the women to the table, I'm like, yes. You know, I was like, let me re- let me research this a little bit further, and that's what I started delving into. And like, yeah, this is this is why it's appealing. So, um, but so I started delving into uh, Vampire the Masquerade, and I wanted to get into this one too. I didn't want to go back and and hit the, uh, you know, hit the older versions first because it, to me it felt like um, reading. The- Older books is like 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 we're talking about like reading VHS or you're like watching watching VHS when you don't have to. <laughs> so <laughs> right, so I um, I decided to take a delve into the current version right now, which is Vampire the Masquerade, the fifth edition, which is published by uh, it, you know it was published by White Wolf, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But now it's published by Modiphius, the same guys who brought us uh, the Star Trek Adventures, uh, Conan, you know the 2D20 system, but also Tales from the Loop. You know, another good ones. Tale to the, you know, two D twenty. I'm still kind of eh on, so I don't know. But Modiphius makes some, they make some decent stuff, so um, I can't knock it too badly. But they published this. It's got a nice, pretty uh, starter set or a you know complete you know a, a book set that you can buy on Amazon. It's really nice. It's not. I think it's about a hundred dollars, but it's like these three hardcover books and like that are all bound up. So it's worth. You know, you're getting three heavy duty books because. The fifth edition book is about four hundred and something pages, so it's a it's a it's a sizable book, but there's a lot to it, and I'm going to go into that in a little bit here. But one of the reasons I wanted to talk about the fifth edition is the controversy that I brought. All right, now a lot of people have overstepped that or whatever, but when they when White Wolf, the people who published it, they uh, when they were going to release this new edition, um, they'd just been bought out by this company Paradox, was who was getting ready to release this. Well, they started looking at uh, I started looking further into what these guys were publishing, and man, well, it turns out that uh, <laughs> that well, uh, you know, that these guys were catering to the bad people. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Yeah. So yeah, they were catering to neo Nazis. You know, it sort of <laughs> seemed like because it started like these, 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 uh, these everything that they were alluding to in the fifth edition was like, wow, what, what's going on here? And they started looking, you know, looking at it, and like, holy crap, you guys are, you know, this is totally, you know, we're we're talking to this right towards, you know, uh, neo-Nazis and, you know, these really alt-right weird groups and, you know, these fringe, you know, political groups like in Europe and, and everywhere else. It's like, you, you don't do that, man. You don't give those people a voice. Not me, anyway. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you do up there in Canada. Uh, yeah. Man, I thought America was all about free speech, but I guess this is over in Europe. We're, we're not taking any of that shit, eh? Right. Um, well, it's, it's more or less that, um, yeah, I guess it's because, you know, you, it, you can... It's such a sticky wicket, man. Anytime that you want to, you know, give, do you, you want to give a voice to hate, you know, to hate groups or whatever, blah blah blah. I don't know, man. But you know, you got some serious stuff going on in uh, Missouri. Is that where it is right now? Um, probably. Oh uh, yeah, Missouri, and that's just about yeah. That's a couple couple states over from me. <clears throat> I can't remember his name. It's George Floyd. Floyd George. I mm-hmm. think he was the uh, the African American gentleman that uh, was. For, for 10 minutes, had a police officer kneeling on his neck while it was being recorded, and then he died. 
that happened. I yeah. think yesterday, and now there's riots today and stuff like that. So, yeah, I guess you yeah, that's really... actually, that's uh, yeah, that's uh, Minnesota. So that's, that's yeah, that's actually in Minneapolis. And yeah, that's yeah, man, it's uh, that's really uh, America, America, we. <laughs> Man, that's what it's like living here buddy it's like a slice of crazy going on there <laughs> you want yeah all the freedom with you know all the freedom twice the crazy yeah so what happened with vampire the uh, masquerade in the neo-nazi accusation stuff i guess white wolf well, got bought up or or they, they, got, yes. they got their pp slapped yeah, they got their peepee slapped. So the publishers, you know, the publishers came around and they they were like, or the people that bought them up, they were like, uh, no, we're not, we're not doing this, because then it came to, you know, it wasn't only that too, but these guys were trying to tailor a whole campaign about, um, about the the Chechnyan, you know, gay, you know, pogrom, which was, you know, the elimination where they, you know, in Chechnya they were pretty much, you know, eliminating gays, you know, horrible, so, horrible thing, man, you know. So crazy how um, there, right. there's there's a dude on on YouTube called Bald and Bankrupt that I've been watching the mm -hmm. last little while. He goes to like the Indian slums. He goes to all mm -hmm. these little weird places like uh, I think, what was it, Yemaran or some weird like that, and then Georgia, which is you know was under attack mm -hmm. by Russia a couple of years ago. And right, like you, you hear about these things as you're growing up and, and whatnot, but they're never really brought to the forefront. And then you watch this guy as he's doing these videos and these walkarounds and stuff, and it's crazy the hate that happened over there when yeah. Russia pulled out of Georgia and sort of left it to its own kind of whatever. They realized that there was only so many resources, so you know it didn't matter. You you got all these white people now. It's white people on white people that are attacking one another because it's like, hey, you're from Jordan and I'm from Georgia, and you're in my country taking my stuff, getting mm -hmm. the hell out of here, and. Man, it's just like he goes to all these war memorials, like people, like just millions of people that have been basically just annihilated. It's such a weird thing that it's so, such a, right. you know, it happens so often over there. It's crazy. Anyways. Yeah. It's, it's civil war breaks out in Europe, you know, like. Side tangent day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. Well, yeah. It was, we were going to get a little political about that, but. No, they started. They started weaving in that whole the whole backdrop of of you know the the murder of you know the the LBGT uh, TBQ community there in Chechnya there in this whole you know major plot point and they're like who the fuck does this man and it's like you know we're gonna all right so we're gonna game about nine eleven you know who, who you know who fuck, like magic going to sessions here and like all right guys we're gonna game about nine eleven you know you know or something you know or we're gonna game about. Uh, you know, we're getting a game about school shootings, you, you know, some controversy. You, you, you don't do that, man. There's some things you don't, some things you just don't do. Some things you just don't do. Yep. And so, uh, well, Paradox, the company who owned White Wolf, they reined them in. They said, well, White Wolf is not going to be publishing this stuff anymore. And so they ended up selling the rights or giving the publishing rights to or selling, you know, business stuff um, to uh, Modifius. And so they they produced the book and they stripped out all of the uh, the negative bad stuff interesting and so here here's what we got today so which is you know which is good what's the um, um what's the most current version of a vampire the masquerade so vampire mask the raid goes back to 1991 and the current version that we have today which was uh published revised um in 2018 is the fifth version um they've had they've had vampire vampire the masquerade vampire the masquerade 2 they've had vampire the uh, i want to it's not it's something uh, uh, well, they have the twenty. They have the twentieth anniversary, and then they have something akin to uh, what is it like the uh, the the new world of, uh, of darkness? And they have something. Uh, it's I don't know. It's the Requiem. That's what it is. Vampire the Requiem, rather. And so they have that. So that counts as like the fourth edition. And now we have this vision, uh, this version today, which they're totally. Um, they're they're still keeping in a lot of the lore as far as that goes, but they've cleaned up the rules and. As far as, if, uh, as the research that I've done, it's a lot more accessible for people to jump in and play it now where you don't have that, you know, you don't have that mountain of lore that you have to jump into. And also, it's not just Vampire the Masquerade that interests me. I would like to, there are going to be other versions of White Wolf games, you know, um, to this effect. You know, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be a, you know, Werewolf the the apocalypse version there's going to be a new mage the ascension which is what i i would actually be into i like magic and shit like that um and so it's new versions but i, I just wanted to go with this one because you know the controversy and, and whatnot and nice. so right now this is this is where we're at hey jay it's, yep. i want to suck your blood 
Oh, yeah, this is exactly it. So <laughs> this is the controversy. So we got the controversy out of the way. All that's been cleared up. Um, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're going back to, uh, 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 you know, back to a traditional, you know, what an RPG should be. But here's the thing, though, and here's what I want to talk about. They, this is, this is what I've been reading about this because I've never played this either. I've never played it. Um, this system, um, which is called the storyteller system. They don't call it, they don't have GMs. They don't have DMs in this game that you, you're a storyteller if you run a game. So, uh, and you don't have NPCs, you have storyteller created um, player characters. So, you have SPCs. So, it's like the whole like... idea is around you being a storyteller rather than some sort of uh, dungeon master or so some game, ma- you know, it's more story focused. Um, it's very rare, you know, they want you to really, you know, hone in on that this is a story and you're creating a, a story and, you know, you're incorporating people in your story. But yet, it has a lot of, you know, a lot of RPG rules in it. So what's, you know which one is it? What's what's the game? Story? What's the game we played at Con on the Cob with uh, uh, with Matthew? Oh, that's Fiasco. Fiasco. So it, yep. it, it's kind of similar to that game, right? Where you, is that must be a storyteller system then, because there's no DM. Uh, I right. don't think I don't think that's going to work with the with the Nerds International guys because you know anytime we sit down and do a thing you know it's going to devolve down to the lowest common denominator right. and before you yep. know it you're having sex with a dead hooker who's getting shot in the head through the you know what I mean and right. then oh, and it, then the guy that's yes. like anti X card which is me is pulling right. an X card because it's like what's going on here yeah what have you done what have, you know the fact I think that was the whole point is like let's get the guy who's anti X card to play one. Uh, no, see, they say they they say all of this stuff like it's a storyteller system or whatever. No, dude, this is an RPG. Well, the storyteller is a GM. Uh, okay, so they're just they're who? they're giving it the you know they're just they're just giving it the illusion that this is you know the story first. But no, this has got rules and you and you play with two D ten. A lot of stuff you have abilities. Not everything. This is not an imaginary game. You roll dice and just like everything else. Now a lot of LARPing and stuff has come out of this, but they've done that on their own. This is not you know. Um, this is a, a, ga- a game that you play with the dice. This is not, you know, this is an RPG. It wants to be, it kind of wants to be something like Fiasco, but no, it's an RPG. And I wouldn't be interested if it was just, you know, like a Fiasco sort of game. I yeah. like dice and shit. So somebody has to take the time to set it up, sort of guide yeah. the story and, and do all that kind of stuff. It's not like right. a free-for-all like Fiasco where everybody no. throws in, you know, a, a word or something and, and you got to sort of build off of that kind of a thing. No. No, you have to design and, and prep a session or whatever. There's actually somebody running the game. They just happen to call their GM, the GM version, a storyteller. I so, think and, um, Brett you, played a lot of Vampire the Masquerade from Gaming and BS. I, I'm pretty sure they talk about it all the time, but I don't want to. I don't want to pin this on him, <laughs> you know, by any means. If it's not a thing that he did, but I'm pretty sure yeah. the, the Gaming and BS guys talk about this all the time. So it's a 2D10 system. Does that mean it's a percentiles? It's a percentile success kind of a thing, or? No, it's actually it's, it's kind of interesting. In the current version, what you do is uh, you you actually have all right. So you have nine attributes if you're playing. Let's say so if you break it down to like if if I if I don't go into the lore or anything because there's a lot of lore. But let's say you essentially play one of the thirteen tribes of vampires. To so long story short, you know you go back all the way to Adam versus Eve, or not Adam versus Eve, but Adam and Eve. Um, no. I think that's a wrestling uh, match right there. <laughs> yes, exactly. Adam versus Eve. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the Ma- serpent. First match of the century. First match ever. You know. She brings so. in an apple or something like that. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, it's the snake. <laughs> the snake gets in the ring. Yeah, see. I'm thinking there, see, huh? And I'm not religious, so, you know, that's that's extra fun. Uh, um, so it goes back to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve had, you know, had Cain and Abel. Cain had three kids. Um, and Abel had three kids. Abel slew Cain, and then their kids had 13 kids, and their 13 kids were cursed by God with vampirism, and they started the 13 tribes, which exist today. You can only play in the current version. You know, you used to be that you could be all 13 tribes, but the, you know, in the current version, they sort of amalgamated it some and made it a little more simple. So you can play as like seven different tribes, and each of these tribes represent something, or the clans, rather, they represent something. Like the Bruja clans are more progressive, the Nosferatu clan is they're like more grotesque. Um, but they're actually like decent, you know, decent vampire. They try not to, you know, you know, succumb too much to the blood to the bloodlust. Um, there's Gangrel, which are more like feral vampires and stuff. So, you know, you can pick one of these people, and so this is sort of aligns with what you want to do. Um, you're you have 
you have uh, you have nine nine attributes, um, and they're they're broken down into three groups: um, physical, social, and mental. And you know that's where you have like strength and, and and dexterity and and whatnot. You know that's how that's all broken down. And then you have a uh, you know you're broken down into skills. And what you do is you're given so many like so many li- different little points to put in your skills. Like they actually call them dots because when you look at the character sheet, you don't have numbers. You have little dots that you fill in. <laughs> wow. Uh, it's, well, what's, well, well, it's kind of funny too because what those dots represent is how many d uh, how many d's uh, d tens you're going to roll for a. Uh, it's not just D10. I mean, it's all D10, so it's not just two D10. So, like, if you have, like, if you have a high strength, let's say you have, you know, five dots in D10. That's how many D10s you're going to roll to do a strength check. Okay, I and got so, you. And so, um, is there one? Uh, is there werewolves in this bad boy? There's, uh, you don't really. There's werewolves in the universe, but you don't really hang out with the werewolves. There's going to be a werewolf game. So it's is werewolf. It, is it just vampires and in, in humans? Yeah, and the, in fact, yeah, it's just vampires. In fact. Um, vampire, in fact, the whole thing is called Vampire the Masquerade because one of the things is, you know, when vampires, you know, were brought out into the world or whatever, they had to have, they had to abide by this code. And the main tenet of this code was, was the masquerade is, you know, you have to remain unknown to humans. You cannot reveal yourself, you know. So if you're drinking blood, you know, if you're going out for a midnight snack, you can't just, you know, be like, Hey Mary, I'm a vampire. You know you can't do that. <laughs> I, li- you know? I like your I like your vampire moves. You're like, hey Mary, hey. <laughs> yep. teeth out. I'm, right, I'm so a horrible vampire. I just man. Want- I just would just like eating a burger. But you're like, just give me your. <gasps> you know. Did you ever watch uh, True Blood? Any of any of those episodes? I did. What I did. We- unfortunately, what do we got? No, for- it, was, it, it was fun. It, it was actually a fun <laughs> show. So um, parts of it were. I, I enjoyed some of it. What do we got for vampire superpowers? Can I can I seduce a woman with my yes. hypnotic, uh, lovely eyeballs? Yes, you uh, absolutely can. There's all kinds of. In fact, um, you know, once you get past the uh, the skills, you know, you have like a brawl skill and social skills and everything like that. Then you have these things called discipline. Um, which allow you to, you know, use like vampire, uh, you know, vampire powers, you know, like hypnotize is, is sort of like one of them. And I think there's a way to like draw blood and everything. There's a way to, to like control animals and stuff. In fact, I'm trying to get to that page real quick for it's here in the book. That's cool. So I can, uh, I'm just, so I can at least. I'm imagining that everybody that I know in real life, because I drive trucks and the, that's the crowd I hang with, if I ever brought this game to the table, it would just be like a lot of like hypnotizing the ladies for sexy time. Yeah, pretty much. That's you know. In fact, I think that's what a lot of <laughs> a lot of people ended up doing. <laughs> that's a power I want that in real be, life. I just want to look at you with my be. my googly eyes. <laughs> Um, there was a, there was an episode of of uh, True Blood that really just sort of infuriated me, and it's this episode. Uh, the vampire comes and knocks at the door. The guy opens the door, sees the vampire, and and he's like, he's like, you can't come into my house. And so the, the vampire looks at him and he hypnotizes him and he says, "Invite me into your house." And so right. he's like, "Please come in." And then all, the vampire comes all in, about you. right? Tears the tears the shit out of the family. And it's like, wait a second, that that's not how I remember the Lord. That's like skirt. What's the point of not being able to be or not being allowed to come into that? You have to be invited to come in. But if you can hypnotize somebody to make you come in, that that seems like like a catch twenty two, man. You're skirting the system there, bud. Right. Bella so, Bell says some so, vampires rip their dicks off. <laughs> like who does what? What? No, who, no that's yeah, you're kidding. Yeah, you're cheating, man. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's where I think I think you can like in the old Hammer movies or whatever, Dracula would like glamour somebody, but like it wasn't full on like puppet. Man, you I'm know? telling you, my my wiener is my most prized possession. I'm just saying, I, right. I don't know if I gotta if I gotta rip it off to be a vampire, I'm I'm taking a hard pass on that one. I'm I'm sorry, but that's yeah. gonna be a hard no. Right, correct. No, um, I'm looking over the disciplines now. They're pretty. They're pretty sweet, man. Just and, and a lot of people, in fact, talking to like a lot of people who play this, is they said, I don't know if we were playing it the right way, like the way that the game wanted you to play it. We just played as like we we you know night you know superheroes in the night with with samurai swords and and, and motorcycles and machine guns. I was like, that doesn't sound like a bad way to play. Yeah, that sounds like a way better way to play than I would play. <laughs> right. So that's kind of how they – so that's how a lot of people saw it. In fact, I've talked to a, a lot of people. They say they didn't play it the traditional way. They just sort of played it as like, 
being vampiric and having super pure superpowers and they weren't necessarily like living in this dark terrible world that's going on in here and that's the whole thing of the world of darkness is like this really grim you know gothic sort of world that they live in but now you got sweet powers man you know you get stuff like uh like the protean discipline lets you change shape you know eyes it gives you stuff like uh eyes of the beast at certain levels it gives you weight of the feather um uh, feral weapons at a certain level once you get to level two that's sort of like using your claws is like feral weapons so you can do that sort of thing um you can shape change at a certain level blood sorcery so that's like using magic to cast spells so that's some pretty cool stuff right there you know the more blood that you draw the more powerful your magic's going to be yeah yeah i seem you to know. recall that um i'm not sure now I'm, I'm i'm having vague recollections of i think it's um not um happy jacks I think Happy Jacks did a whole like Vampire the Masquerade thing, um, like a, an actual play, but mm-hmm. um, it was set in modern times. Like in you know, because I think one of them had like a bunch of money and a helicopter and a mm-hmm. skyscraper, and there was some adventures going on. And then there was like a bazooka, or not a bazooka, but a rocket launcher that did some things. Right. Like, just recalling this, this part of the story, and then one of the vampires that was in the helicopter basically landed in the ocean because uh, they were in like a like a, say they were in like Miami or something like some some kind of port yeah. city. Excuse me, but I seem to recall something like that. So I, I see how those rules come into effect. That would be a much cooler game playing, you know, playing that way. That's how they, a lot of people I, I think sort of take it. They take the vampire. In fact, they, they sort of play it like action oriented instead of like brooding, like gothic. I'm so lonely, bleh, you know. Instead of that, it, it's sort of they play it as sort of like action oriented, where you you're you know, you're a vampire, but you're a modern vampire. You live in this world, and you know you have all this power and and prestige and money and you just you know you live this life on the fast lane and you know you kind of if you think about it it's sort of analogous to like how people lived in the 80s with the you know with with being you know with the with the coke addiction and everything like that too they were living fast you know and, and like partying hard on coke and you think about it these kind of what these guys are doing now and if you think about it too these guys are essentially playing addicts they're vampires what do they got to do they, they they addicted to that blood yeah that it's... delicious delicious blood I don't know what kind of legs this this would have playing a vampire all the time and, and killing humans and stuff like that. Well, uh, I, I don't know if it really floats my boat. I, I'd rather you know st- put a stake in a in a vampire's heart and be a vampire right. hunter kind of a thing. <laughs> that's a little more up my yeah, right. Um, but now that's the thing too because uh, you do have something called humanity. Once you start off, as you start off with like seven humanity points out of ten, and you actually gain humanity, and that's closer to your former self. Um, the more humanity you have, that's the closer you are to, to, to being more, more human in that sense. Um, the more compassion you have, the more good deeds you do, Yeah. the more humanity that you're going to, you're going to, you're going to gain back the less that you do, the more that you succumb to your bloodlust, you know, the more that you just have to feed and the more that you do that. And you actually get, there's a mechanic for that. You actually have something called hunger. And the more that you have to do that, um, you know. You, you have to you, you have to fight that sort of you know inner you know the inner dynamic whether or not you're gonna you know lose your humanity completely or you're just gonna have to feed so badly yeah. and one of the sort of like too if you think about it it's sort of like being a junkie man are you gonna fucking you know <laughs> you know are you gonna you know how bad do you want that how bad do you want that meth or you know you're gonna you know you're gonna steal grandma's uh, VCR you know is that how bad you want it there's so, a game there somewhere. Yeah. There, there's a game there somewhere. Instead of you mm-hmm. know, Vampire the Masquerade, let's call it like, you know, Crackhead the Addict kind of a thing or you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you guys all play like druggies and stuff like that. You're all addicted to the junk and, and whatnot. Yeah. And you get you know, sometimes yeah. you get a superpower like fly and you end up taking a you know, a header right. off the top of a building. But, right. Uh, meth head meth head the addiction. Right. <laughs> there we got it. There <laughs> we're, it is. we're horrible. Uh, we are horrible well, it, people. Well, it's funny. Did you Especially ever watch you. that show, uh, Intervention? Yes. There was a show up. I used to get high as shit and watch that and laugh my ass off. I bet. Because you're like, nobody's in my <laughs> living room telling me I need to stop doing this shit. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. because Well, no. I, yeah, exactly. Because I'm functional. I have a job. And it's not like I just smoke weed shit. And that's not even a drug. That's a plant. I think it's still a class one in America, isn't it? You could go to jail for um, that, mister. I better edit that out. Nah, no, I can't. Oh, okay. Okay, you got to, you got to, you got to find, it. you got to prove it. I can say whatever I want to. I can say I murdered a baby. Doesn't mean I did it. Wow. What? <laughs> wow. Are you high right now? That's what I want to know. I, I plead the, I plead the fourth. 
Okay. Well, in that case, uh, yeah, I don't know. Right. I could see Vampire the Masquerade actually being kind of a fun thing to do. Like, you know, it's uh, yeah. if if you throw in that sort of corporate uh, corporate espionage, uh, you you know, <laughs> your struggle to sort of rise in power. I think that would actually be kind of a slick way to play the game. Um, it's one of the things that I, or one of the reasons that I play role playing games, is because. Um, I, I like advancing my character. Like I like going out and getting things and, and you yeah. know, doing my adventures and getting coin and spending it on stuff. When I was a kid, I used to right. build my uh, my little castles and stuff and I would pay for the porculus and, mm. you know, all of that stuff, right? And uh, that, mm. that shit just, it, it, it interests me. It's why I like playing World of Warcraft and, and doing the grind mm. on that and stuff like that and increasing my characters mm-hmm. and getting my money and... So yeah, it would be kind of a neat to be uh, to be a vampire. You know, you've got that bit of immunity and stuff like that, and lifetimes to uh, sort of build your empire, so to speak. Yeah, and then still fall under the rules of you know the masquerade kind of a thing, which is pretty slick. Yeah. So sounds interesting. What I, right? No, no, it, it does. And, it, and with this, and ultimately they're going to make uh, versions of the other of the other games like Werewolf the Apocalypse. And the one that I was always re- interested in was uh, Hunter uh, Hunter the Reckoning. Where you actually play as like a monster hunter, and it's sort of like that same thing too. Where you know, um, maybe that these vampires that are that are hanging out, maybe it's your job to go out and take these out. Maybe it's the ones in the masquerade. Maybe you could it's characters from another campaign. You know, maybe you play you, you move over to this one and you play as somebody who hunts those you know hunts those old characters down. Hmm. There's something to that effect. So when are you running? Uh, when are you running us through some Vampire the Masquerade? When? Uh... Uh, well, here's the thing. Let me uh, let me this one. I just gave it a brief glance. Um, just read, read through the rules, you know, as much as I could to, to for the notes. But this is a, this would if I ran it, it would have to be this one, this version, because I'm not running um, what you call it the uh, the the twenty man the twentieth anniversary rules uh, that that came out in 2011. Man, that book is like 700 pages, man. <laughs> <laughs> it is. That's that. Um, and same. Right, because it just has all the lore condensed, lore over 20 years. It's all, let's throw about 300 pages worth of that and put that in it. Because I started looking at Mage of the Ascension as as far as like an entry in these games. And I was like, man, 700 pages is not an entry into anything, but like, I don't know, like seminary, you man, know, or something like that. Jay, 700, you know, like pages is, 700 pages is not a book you bring to the RPG store. It's a book you bring to a freaking like battle royale. You know what I mean? <laughs> Exactly. Like you, you kill some weapon. people with that thing. You have that sort of bitch strapped to your back, ready to pull out and use on a cockroach, right? Or something. Hey, what the hell? <laughs> it's no man. Um, and and it's funny too because uh, right now, because I was reading this and I just now got to the. Uh, um, I was going to talk to tell you about this. I just now been saving it for tonight because I got off call, but I just got to the to the game mastery chapter in ICRPG, and I'm wanting to compare. You know, I'm wanting to compare the two, so. I'm really excited about that. But overall, what I would end up doing here is with Vampire, I would I would not run Vampire the Masquerade because Vampire, I'm not really sort of into vampires. I kind of, the system, I think, is actually kind of cool because, you know, you roll for, uh, you know, you, you roll, uh, it's a D10. One through five is a, is a failure and six through 10 is a success. And, like, you just, you roll to see how many, like, you this task might take five successes and you, uh, you know, you roll for dice. And if you get a 10 on it, it counts as uh, two successes. So, so yeah, so that, that that's kind of fun, but I would actually wait to play like something like Werewolf or Hunter or even like Mage the Apocalypse. When when those when when those newer versions come out, that's what I would actually be interested in. To be honest with you, it, it's weird. Like you're like, let's play some Werewolf, and all I imagine is I'm going to spend the evening sniffing another dude's butt. <laughs> <laughs> well, then uh, apparently Mage is supposed to be pretty cool, but everybody says it's broken with the magic. But you know, me and you like riffs, and you know, and I got you liking some of the super stuff we did. So maybe we like broken stuff. So maybe that'd be fun. I don't know. I like sort of like overpowered stuff. That's sort it's, of like my uh, bread and butter. It as is far as possible. Goes. Man, you put a solid fifty some odd, well, thirty minutes anyway into this thing. Is there anything that uh, you want to? Uh, end with on Vampire the Masquerade. Vampire, I here's what here's my, my my quick little thoughts on it. Overall, is I thought it was for LARPing, but I can see where you could actually play. A, 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 I thought it was just the bones to play, bones to be able to LARP on, because you've heard a, I've heard a lot of people playing, um, you know, doing that with uh, with Vampire the Masquerade is running LARPs on it. In fact, Owen Lean and a lot of the other people they ran like successful, you know, like long time LARPs out of it. And I thought it was just the bonus of that, but no, there's an RPG here, and the mechanics of it are pretty cool. And if it t- if it dovetails over to a setting that I'm a little more interested in, 
Um, because I just vampires, it, 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 it's it's okay, you know, it, 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 it's it's all right for me. But I like uh like major hunter. I'd be more interested in, to be honest with you. Gotcha. Or I, I or like we wraith. Should, we should start a LARP, dude. We will get a bunch of ladies together, and then me and you will cool. be the vampires, and we'll just you we'll, right. we'll use our mind powers and probably end I, up I, in jail with rape charges. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say I like where there's going. In fact, if I was gonna. If we were gonna lark, I was gonna uh, I was gonna get a sombrero, and my name was going to be uh, Pablo Sanchez. <laughs> Pablo Vampiro Sanchez. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Sanchez. Yeah, Vampiro. That's what it is. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is right. <laughs> uh, that's far too funny. All right, well, we're gonna wrap this show up, man. That's fifty five minutes. Let's punch into the uh, the outro here. And uh, we'll take it from there. Let me kick in some of this, this, and this, just to make sure I hit all these channels. And we're going to blast the outro. Let's do it. There it is. This is my favorite jingle, I got to say, Jay. I really do enjoy this one. I like this one a lot, too. All right. We're going to reduce the volume on this bad boy. Go back to the show notes. Scroll down to the bottom. And <clears throat> that's it for this edition. Wow. That was a whole mouthful of mumbles there. <laughs> that's it for this edition of the murder hobo rpg show we hope you enjoyed it and if you didn't as usual we don't care i'm not saying alba humbug to you anymore i gotta <laughs> i gotta take that out of there it was funny <laughs> that's why i keep leaving it in there um uh yeah if you're interested in submitting to community questions so you can hear us poke fun at you and not answer your questions honestly you can do so at murder hobo show at gmail.com otherwise send your hate mail to Bleep, dot, suck my blood. <laughs> suck my blood. You can also get us on Twitter at The Murder Hobo Show, on YouTube at The Murder Hobo Show, where I show you how to make three-dimensional battle maps for role-playing in Tabletop Simulator, among other stuff. Uh, you can watch me do this live on Twitch at The Murder Hobo Show, or uh, your best bet is to catch us over at MeWe. As always, you can find the great nerds from the Nerds Internationals on MeWe as well. For example, such classics as, let's uh, let's hit the Pete Jones that's not in here and see what you know of Pete Jones. Yeah, Pete Jones, our newest addition to Nerds International. Old Pete Jones, his new podcast, Dragons Are Real. So he, uh, Pete Jones, is a lovely Welshman. He's got a lovely accent. Sounds like he uh, just got done beating up somebody, you know, watching soccer. Um Lovely, lovely, fantastic guy. Mm -hmm. But no, he's got you covered as far as your OSR. And our, he's actually been playing a lot of ICRPG, so he's got a lot of love from Gary in that sense. But uh, I've actually been uh, been checking out his podcast. He also covers a lot of... Uh, a lot of web-based, you know, a lot of web-based, simple, like, virtual tabletops, which is pretty neat. So he's, uh, you know, looking out for you, you know, as far as that goes in your virtual tabletop needs. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're interested in that and you're also interested in some uh, OSR goodness and maybe a little uh, ICRPG goodness, uh, go check out Dragons Are Real with Pete mm -hmm. Jones. Yeah, I heard from the he UK. Was, I heard he was going to be the next Doctor Who. Yeah, I think so too. I think he was going to be the the 15th Doctor, or he was going to at least uh, be on the show as a pile of poop. <laughs> I thought you were going to say well, he's going to he's going to be one of the uh, what do they call those um, telephone the booths? Daleks or whatever? The, yeah, <laughs> or oh no, the Tardis. Or the Tardis. He, he oh, just he... opens up his jacket and he's you know he's standing there buck naked with his black socks on. Wait a second, that's what yeah. I like to do. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you can find the things that we discussed here in the show notes organized by most recent at the top at murderhoboshow.podbean.com. Nice. Thanks for listening. Be sure to tune in next time. We will have another action-packed show where we'll talk about things we know little to nothing about and sound professional doing it. Have a great gaming week, everybody. We're out of here. Say goodbye, Uncle Jay. Adios, folks. The Murder Hobo Show is not affiliated with or endorsed by any companies mentioned on this show. Any of the products mentioned on our show or appear on our website are the property and copyright of the respected owners. All items are used under fair use for educational and review purposes. All other items are the intellectual property of the Murder Hobo Show, copyright 2020, all rats reserved.